And here we are in uh, micro, uh, in Seattle for a scream about MakeCode Arcade. This is Pelly from the Microsoft MakeCode team, and today we have with us Elliot. Elliot and Elliot. Well, today we're going to be building surprise, surprise, a Galga game. So we're going to follow that tutorial and build it, and probably customize it afterwards. So how about we get going? Yeah. So if you want to go to arcade.makecode.com and if you're watching this video, you can also right click two times uh, in the video and select picture in picture to see the video and do the coding. And then if you scroll down to tutorials you can do the Galga tutorial. Fly your space plane through the oncoming boogie aircraft, spacecraft. Can you survive the boogie attack? Okay, so it's a game where you just shoot. The sprites are coming from the right, and you've got some kind of plane that shoots down the... Okay, sounds good. And we know what we're trying to build. Oh, let's see. So what are you doing right now? Creating a sprite. Okay, we're creating a sprite, and we have to rename it as Space Plane. So something new, Elliot, that we're going to use a lot is collapsing the simulator when we're coding. So if you see on the, now keep that, keep that around. If you go on the right of the simulator, there's this arrow. Right here? Yeah, and go and collapse them. So we have a lot of space. Okay. Uh, so we want to rename this variable to space plane. And to rename the variable, click there, yep. Space plane, yeah. Let's zoom in a, a one time so we see it Kay. better. And the there we go. Ooh. All right. And you want to draw a plane. So let's see your your see your skills. <laughs> so here we are in the sprite editor, which is a full blown pixel art editor. It's got a lot of features. You're welcome to kind of discover them. We could spend could spend a whole video on explaining how to do that, but I'll let Richard Richard do that on the team. He's the super expert at the this editor, and we see Elliot has a very cool design with asymmetric wings. Not completely. <laughs> Yeah, there's a fill tool if you want to speed that up. There we go. That works too. Okay. Shooter. Perfecto. All right. And if you expand the simulator, we can test the program and take a look at it. And see that? Yeah. The sprite is showing up. It doesn't move though. Not yet. Not yet. Set the space pane to say in the screen. So that's the mm. goal, and we have to turn that into code. So if you think yeah. in your head, and the colors are there to kind of give you a hint. Let's try to do it without the hint. Without the hint. Yeah. So change screen. Yes. I want to turn that on. Oh, see, it's unhappy yeah. because my sprite doesn't exist. But, oh, space plane, space there we go. Plane. Yeah, we're on the space plane to stay in the screen. Let's see what else we have. And that's it. And we can double check that. Yeah. Yeah, by default, the sprite can go anywhere, including outside the screen. Next. Start the game with a few lives, so set life to three. Set, set life to two, two, three. To three. You can change that later. Yeah. Or you can put more if you want. No, I'm good. Next. Move the space plane with the controller buttons and change the sensitivity VX and VY to 200. So, this one. So, that looks good. 
and let's put it there. And that's going to be, that tells you how, how many pixels per second the, the plane is going to do. So the higher, the faster. And let's test the game to see how this works. So let's see. We've got three lives. The sprite is stuck in the screen. Try to get out. Yeah, nuts. And it's pretty fast. If you're wondering what keys you can use, you can click on the keyboard icon. So Elliot, how about you show that? You click on the keyboard icon, you got all the keys there, in case you're wondering. Okay. Sounds good. So we've got a moving plane. Add an event to run the code when button A is pressed. In that event, create a projectile named Dart. Let's launch or, from Space um, Plane. All right, let's do it uh, step by step. So, you want controller? You, yeah, because it's button A, yeah. and it's an event. So you're gonna put that on the right, and let's move the whole view. There we go. And now we want to create a projectile. So projectile is a sprite. Find it on sprites. And I think, so we, we can't create a projectile like this, but actually there's a specialized block for that, which we use. Scroll down one more, there you go. You can drag the whole view. So if you click outside the blocks, if you click here, there you go. All right, uh, and there's a little warning sign. So what's going on? We want to start, so we want to launch the bullets from, oh, they tell you, space plane. from space plane, yeah. Except for the, now the speed, let's take a look at what happens right now. I guess we need to draw some kind of bullet or rocket or something. Mm -hmm. Let's draw that and then we're gonna test the code to see if it works. Some red lines, it's very traditional bullet design. There we go. Looks like a battery. A battery, fully charged. Uh, let's expand the simulator and see if this works out. So it's moving and spacebar. Yeah, it's not shooting the way where we want it. So in this uh, projectile block, there's two numbers. It tells you the initial speed of the, the, um, the bullets. So we want the bullets to go horizontally. So I think we want, do you want, yeah, we want some speed there. And then what did they say? 200. <coughs> How about vertically? Zero. Zero. Because it. It's flat. And that could be fun to have bullets that fall down. Well, we'll take a look at that later. So, so we're creating bullets, and now we're gonna start spawning the bad guys. Yeah. So we're gonna grab that. Let's keep moving the code. There you go. And in that event, you're gonna create a sprite of kind enemy. So you're gonna, yeah, keep that. And here it's gonna be an enemy. So there are different families of sprites and they define what's going on in your game. You can actually define your own, but. So, so far we have the player sprites, the projectiles, and we're gonna have the did you add a new one or rename it? I renamed it. Oh, let's see. Is that still good? Oh, yeah. All right. And now, so those are the planes that are coming from the, from the right of the screen. 
If you're uh, need, if you're looking for inspiration, you can also click on the gallery, grab one of the image there, and then modify it. Some, how about a cat? Snake. Oh, a snake. Yeah. Double eye snake. There you go. Done. We name it to Boogie. Let's check the hint to make sure we, we got it right. Yeah, that looks good. Let's test the game. Always test the game. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, well, that makes sense. We just created a sprite uh, in the middle of the screen, but it has no, no speed or no yeah. position, so that's good. And also, we don't handle overlaps. We're making progress. On the boogie sprite, set the velocity with values to have it fly horizontally and from right to left. Okay, so so we need to set the velocity of the boogie sprites. It's a sprite, so it's probably going to be. Yeah. And there's a set velocity. Now we want to do something. So to fly horizontally, we need a speed. We need. So that means your vertical speed is? 200, like the other one. It's going to be kind of like the other one, but inverse. Yeah. What is the other one doing? Negative 200, wait. Or for the horizontal velocity? Mm, what are you trying to do? It has to shoot from, has to come right to left, right? Oh. So to go backwards, you want to do a negative speed. Yeah. So go negative 50. All right. 50. And then how about? But then that one. They, they run flat. So that one should be something like zero. zero. Yeah. You can start ch tweaking those numbers l later on. All right. Then has to start. Let's check the hint, make sure we got that, that going. Yeah, that looks about right. They made it a bit faster. They did minus 100. Add the code to set the position of the boogie. Now, yeah, it's it's starting in the middle of the screen, so we need to move it out. We need to position the boogie out of the screen. So keep that, let's keep that around. And set. set position. Oops. There we go. All right, so we want to be on the right side of the screen, which means actually beyond. Well, try 160. Let's try. Let's try as far as possible. And what about uh, vertical position? Invert. The oh, Y. You want to make that random? Yeah, or just make that random. Where is that? If you can, you search if you don't for, you don't remember where things are. All right, and let's move the code back into the center. There we go. So th our screen is 120 high. So we're picking a position in between the two. Let's see, Let's see how that works. Yeah, it's not too bad. Looking good. Now we need overlap. Yeah, we need to do the overlap. One more event to run code when a player sprite overlaps with an enemy sprite. All right, so let's grab this massive event here and let's put it, yeah, let's move the whole view. Okay, so it reads on sprite of kind. Let's move it all the way to the top left. On player of kind, player overlaps with other sprite of kind. Enemy. Enemy. So that the code runs when we touch an enemy Oops. Enemy. And okay, so what do we want to do now? 
it's called projectile, and I think we're dealing with player and enemy. We'll do uh, projectile later. Projectile, yeah. We'll do it later. Okay, let's see what happens now. Uh, destroy the other sprite. So we're going to destroy. So we're going to destroy the uh, enemy sprite. Shouldn't that be projectile? I think we're going to remove a life. Now, so what you want to do is take this and put it here. So when, so when the event happens, we store in these variables, these are variables, we store in variables which sprite is the enemy sprite and which sprite is the uh, player sprite. Mm -hmm. Because you actually have a lot of enemy sprites, so you don't know which one. And you can actually test this out if you want. When, uh, Cool. in the game it's, it's a good idea to keep testing your game so mm -hmm. whenever it's going to touch something see it disappears you can make the destroy way more dramatic if you click on plus and you add an effect which always kind of works well if you click on the plus in the the destroy we can add an effect there mm. there we go oh yeah <laughs> all right um, let's see what else do we have okay so Not you event. add code to remove a life Right, so you've been uh, hit by the the enemy, so you lose a life, that makes sense. And eventually, when you run out of life, it's going to be game over. You start with the boom. Too bad. Right. And that's automatic. Actually, go back to the simulator. Let's, uh, let's mute it. See the little mute button? Nope. There's a little speaker. See the little speaker button next to the keyboard? Yeah. Mute it. Next. Put an event to run code when the projectile overlaps with the enemy sprite. Okay, so we're handling now second case where so it's going to be the event. Yeah. And that's going to be between projectile. Oh, hold on cuz we our face is hiding the corner. So you want to be on this side. And projectile, projectile touching a enemy. Yes. So uh, you're not running any code. So you're not going to see anything. Yeah. So what do you want to do? You probably want to destroy destroy the enemy or take some lives from the enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, so the other sprite is containing the enemy sprite. So we're going to destroy that one. That sounds good. And remember, we have to grab the variable there. Here we go. Here we go. And we want probably, so do you want the bullet to go through the enemy or probably, probably want one stop. bullet per enemy? So you also have to destroy it. Yeah. Let's take a look at the next step. I think that's what they're going to do. Destroy the sprite. So that's the projectile. Okay, and same thing, we're going to destroy it. This time. Yeah, this one. There we go. And we're going to put Fire, fire effects. effects. Yeah, I love fire effects or any other effects actually. And that sounds good. So they're both done, and I guess you're gonna get some points of sorts. Yeah, change the score by one. So that's a quick. That makes for a quick little game. Let's see. Let's try it. Let's see how it looks like. Maybe a little faster. 
So the basic functionality of the game is is there. You've got score, although you're pretty bad at it, Elliot. <laughs> You've got shooting. It's really hard. I think it moves too fast. It moves too fast. Yeah. All right. Well, let's click finish and it starts customizing the game. Boss fight. So as usual, when you finish, you can share and send it to your friends. If you click in the simulator and click R, you can start recording. Dang it. Well, that was fast. There you go. And you do a quick, quick little GIF, 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 GIF. And if you hit public, you'll get a URL, and then you can use that URL to play, to play your game. With that being said, let's mod it. All right, what do we do, Elliot? I'm thinking we add a boss, you know. Oh, a boss? Okay, so add a new, how do you want to do that? Well, every like 10 seconds. Okay. So we're looking for the event that what? runs every so often. Which is shouldn't be in Sprite. Not in control there. Oh. Oh, there we go. And you're gonna want to run that. You know what? How about we copy, we clo we duplicate the previous one, and then we mod it. Yeah. So. Get rid of that. Let's duplicate the one here down here. This? Yeah. How about you collapse the simulator so we get more space? Mm -hmm. And let's duplicate this. So right click, duplicate, move it out of the way. All right. So that's the boss. Maybe change him. So how f you want a boss every half second? <laughs> five. Let's do five. That is fine. And yeah, you didn't want to change the image. You can go in the gallery and big, pick some big images. So if you go scroll up, like like the burger is like a 64 by 64 image. It's much, it's 32 by 32, so it's double the size. Um, do you want it to be fat? Bosses are a bit slower, right? Yeah. So how about we slow it down? No, that's gonna be that's faster. Gonna be yeah, nice and slow. And it's an enemy. Although it's gonna be a pretty weak boss. Let's try it. Because if you shoot it once. It's yeah, we die. have to change its life. But then we have to change the name too. It's a pretty weak boss. <laughs> but I don't I I know how to fix it. You don't need to change a name. It's fine. It's a boss of. If you want to change its life. Well, I think we need a new category. We need to create a new kind for him. Yeah. So go to the kind part. Let's collapse the, the simulator. And instead, add a new kind. It's called boss. Okay. So this is a boss, and now. If you run the game, you'll see that nothing happens because we don't handle the boss yet. Everything goes through him. So we're going to have to duplicate all our events. Let's collapse the simulator and, and do all the interactions between the player and the boss. And then, yeah. so we want to duplicate this one. Except this time. Except this time it's going to be between the player and the boss. Okay, so what happens when the boss touches the player? I think he's dead. Let's take more lives out. Okay. Now we need to do between. And then. Projectile. Is this one? No, we have All to right. do is change the light. Yeah, let's move it out so it's less messy. All right, let's see. So, well, there's one problem is we destroy the boss immediately and that's not good. We need to be smarter. 
that buggy life. No, no. Go back to the. Go back to the code. It's here. So okay. So you want to first of all, you get more points. Yeah, you get so what do you want to do with the boss when you when you touch him with the bullet? <laughs> you you don't get any points till you kill it. Like okay, I'll make it simple. You get so here's two a, points. Ahead. Here's the thing we could do, which would be fun. When you touch, when you hit it with a bullet, it you push it back backwards. Yeah. And you get some points. Yeah. But it doesn't get destroyed. No, that's not working out. Let's see in sprites what we can do with that boss. Da, 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 da. No. We could set it to follow it. What is in set? There's a lot of functions that. Is there a life? Set. Is there a life on the sprite? No, but there is in. So I think we're going to create a variable and we're going to hold the number of lives that the boss has. And then, uh, yeah. You can do that. No. So we, what do we want to do? We want to count that. We want to count that the boss has, let's say, 10 lives and then you have to shoot yeah. him 10 times. Okay, so let's create a variable that's going to hold the number of lives of the boss. So you want to create a variable in the variable toolbox. What? And we're going to create a new variable, which is the boss lives. And now you already have a variable. You want to create a variable that's going to hold the number of lives your boss has. So you have to give it a different name. Yeah. Okay, uh, and we're going to initialize it when we create a new boss. So let's go in the event that creates the new boss. Input it. So a variable is just like a drawer in memory. It lets you hold data and store it. So you first want to set a number in that life variable. So you want to use the block that sets a number. The block you're holding reads the number that's held in the life, so that's not what you want. So let's go into the uh, variable drawer, and there you see there's a set life to zero. Let's put that here. So how many lives that the? Uh, ten. Ten. Okay. And now uh, let's see when the boss gets shot. What's going on? No, no. Hold on. I meant uh, the code. So when a projectile touches the boss, we want to first remove a life from the boss. And that means removing one from the life variable. So Where is my life? Uh, well, you can always get it from the toolbox. Yeah. So get, get in the toolbox in variables and take the block that changes the life. Yes, that one. And you want to change it by negative one. Negative one. Okay. Now now this is where we have to add a condition. We have to check whether we still have some life left. And we can use Yeah, what is happening? I don't think you'll see anything. Because it's all happening in the memory of the computer, and there's no sprite to show it. All right. So we're going to test whether the life is less than zero, and we can use an if statement for that. Jeez. Which is if. No. Oh, yeah, there we go. And you want to drop that after changing the life. Let's move everything out of the way. 
Okay, so how do we test that life is less than zero? We need something that's like diamond shaped. So if you go back to logic, scroll down a bit. Yeah, second one there. Oh, wait. But you're gonna change it. Yeah. And that goes in there, and now we can actually read the ver the value of life. So you can go into the variable life and take the, the round version of it. So this block reads what number is stored in life right now. And find the spot where you can drop it on. There we go. But can we put it on the left? It doesn't want to. It doesn't want to. Where is it going? Oh, it's misbehaving for us. Oh, here. You have to take the left tip. Well, there we go. Uh, if it's less than zero, I think we can destroy the, the boss. So I think we already have a block to destroy the boss. We're just going to move it around the first block here uh -huh. and move it out. Yeah. Uh, so control and then click and move it out. So now when we shoot the boss, he's losing lives and eventually he'll lose enough lives that we'll destroy it. Let's see. Cool, we got a boss and we got a bunch of points. If you don't... Oh, we got two bosses. So it reset it his life. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Wank, 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 wank. Okay, and I think that's enough for today. We've taken Galga and modified it. We can take a look at more mods maybe uh, in a future video. If your code is all around the place, there's one trick you can use. No, you want to mm -hmm. do that. Instead of dragging things around, right click on the workspace and say format code. And it's just going to pack it up for you nicely. All right. Well, Elliot, thank you for uh, the coding today and see you in another video.